Welcome to my tomato and squash garden. We're gonna give a tour of this garden today. Can you say hi? Hi. Let's start with potatoes. So I have a couple of different varieties of potatoes that I planted this year. Two late season and one mid season. And the plants are doing pretty well. You can see the holes in the leaves, probably flea beetle damage. But overall, potatoes are looking good. Hopefully I'm gonna harvest them in like August sometime. My next row I planted my winter squash. So our thought is that the winter squash is going to grow where the potatoes are growing once we harvest the potatoes. And as you can see, I have a couple of tomatoes sprinkled in this row. For winter squash, I planted some spaghetti, some delicata, an Italian squash that you use in the squash ravioli, and some butternut. We're in the back of the next row, and I planted some shelling peas. These are so fun. We harvested some for dinner the other day, and they were really good. So sweet. So I'll show you what the inside of one of these looks like. So you want to harvest them when they're plump and that you can feel the little peas in there. She saw that I was picking one of the shelling peas and came right over. Just break it down in the middle there, and you have little peas. Would you like to eat them? Apple. Okay, go ahead. Mmm. In the front of the row, I have a couple of zucchettas and then some cucumber seeds that didn't pop up, but I did start seeds and I need to transplant those out. I think that is a Armenian cucumber. And oh, I did plant some gherkins down here. You can see them right there. And then these are market more cucumbers. So in this row, I planted a little bit of an experiment. As you can see, I have a bunch of snap peas that I planted and then below them, there are some tomatoes. I love snap peas, so I just kind of wanted to throw them in the ground and see what they would do. Peas are a nitrogen fixing plant as well. So we've been harvesting a bunch of snap peas. She's been helping quite a bit. And I've been slowly removing the stalks of the peas and giving them to the animals and they really enjoy them. And as for the tomatoes, this is my cherry tomato row. I planted some yellow pear, some red cherries, some sun golds. I think there's a green zebra tomato down this row as well. It's not a cherry, but um, it's, it's a fun variety. And as you can see, so this is um, one of my slicer tomatoes here. And then here is the cherry tomato. The peas have shaded out the tomato plants a little bit. So they're a little bit behind the growth of some of the other tomatoes in my garden. So I'm not sure I'll do this again next year, but this was a really fun experiment. You got it. Can you show mama? Good job. These are my slicer tomatoes. They are looking very good. So we have some Chargers, Old Saybrooks, some Dr. Witchies. And I also have some Ace 55s. And at the back of the row here, we have tomatillos. So this is a green tomatillo variety. I've grown them in the past and they are very prolific. It does look like they are getting munched a little bit. So when you're growing tomatillos, you actually need two plants in order to get tomatillo plants. They um, need two plants in order to fertilize the flowers properly and make fruit. My last row of tomatoes in this garden are my paste tomatoes. So I really like the Amish paste variety, which is the majority of these plants here. And then at the end, I'm trying out ox heart, which is this tiny plant and then this bigger plant here. And then we have some San Marzanos at the end. My last row here, we have two watermelons and then a bunch of summer squash, green and yellow varieties. So that was a late June, pretty much July tour of my tomato and squash garden. Thank you for joining us today in the garden. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.